So when you think about all these market dynamics, uh, maybe you can give your perspective on why this investment uh, would make sense for Canadian farmers. Uh, maybe, yeah, that's the slide I'm looking for. Um, let me just move here the, give me a second. Right. Um, right. Um, to our audience, um, I would like you to look at the 676 Canadian dollars. Um, first question is, who came up with this figure? Well, I did. Um, based on what? Well, I did a, a, a 10 to 15 year prognosis of um, urea prices, a forecast for urea prices um, for banks, uh, uh, which are interested in investing, let's say at least into debt, uh, into urea projects. Um, number one, this forecast was done in October last year and I lowballed it. In other words, if you go to, let's say my, um, my competitors or let's say in the industry, um, I would say the prices are at least a uh, hundred dollars higher. The reason why I lowballed it is um, I want to keep this credible. I mean, um, I'm not pricing in Russian invasion in the Ukraine because again, this is transitory. These things, you get peaks and you get troughs um, in every market and you got to look at what the annual averages will be. So I am relatively uh, sure that the $676 is a price, an average price that you guys can run with over the next 10, 15 years as an average in Canada. Um, let us then go right back and look at the actual cost that's on the left hand side of producing one metric ton of urea now your cash cost is approximately 125 dollars a ton that's your gas this is your fixed your fixed costs then you've got let's say um other costs of 176 dollars a ton so technically if i wanted to build a urea plant um in canada which is owned, let's say, by private corporations. I could spin, let's say, a story to uh, senior lenders that on an average, we, as a production company, would be earning $265 a ton over a period of, let's say, 10, 15 years. $20, which is the next one, that would go, let's say, the trader margins, marketer margins. Then you've got distributor margin of $40 a ton. Then you've got a retailer margin of $50 a ton. In other words, you've got $375 a ton of pure profit, which you as farmers are paying for. And this is financing a CEO of a large company, which is earning anywhere between $1 and $3 million a year, and these various lackeys, which are earning anywhere between half a million and $900,000 a year. Um, actually, um, this is the money which you guys can actually save. We are talking of $262 million Canadian dollars savings per annum. Um, now, the question was, uh, from Derek, why does this investment make sense for farmers? I would have reworded the question uh, as an outsider um, and considering what I've already presented, this should be considered as existential for Canadian farmers. Why? For simple reasons. Farm economics have become paramount. Thus, farmers need to keep OPEX per acre as low as possible. Canadian farmers need to insulate themselves from abnormally high logistic costs on their urea input prices. Again, we are talking of New Orleans plus 130 Canadian to 160 Canadian dollars per ton. And if we have another corona, another pandemic, or we have problems um, in the logistics side, this price will go up, which means 
your urea coming out of Medicine Hat or coming out of Sisferka, they're going to price the logistics higher, i.e. they're looking at what the logistics cost and they're going to price their urea higher, which you as farmers are going to pay for. Next, no farmer can afford supply disruption. I mean, how often um, um, have you uh, been in a situation that you can't get your fertilizer inputs because a boat has come late or because um, you've got, let's say, disruption here or disruption there on the logistics side. In other words, you farmers need to insulate yourselves, um, not only from a high logistic costs, but also you need a guaranteed annual volume and you need to be guaranteed that during the period where you need the fertilizers that you have access to them. Okay, and you've got to guarantee yourself against geopolitical disturbances, what we have at the moment. Next question I have for the listeners is how high have your real prices gone since Russia walked into Ukraine? And this is just before the spring season. Urea producers are going to make an absolute killing. You farmers need some sort of a price hedge. Remember 2007, 2008, 2021? What would happen if the USA imposes nitrogen sanctions or certain countries uh, on certain countries or imposes anti-dumping duties on certain origin? It will push North American prices even further. Having your own plant is going to save, solve this problem. Over to you, Derek. Great, Oliver. Thank you. Um, I would I'd be remiss if I didn't point out, to, you know, like when you were doing your forward-looking analysis of retail pricing for farmers for the urea costs on average, you're expecting that to go up to around $676 a ton around, uh, let's say the high 600s. Um, I don't know if what what uh, the, the participants on the call, but if you look back at the la uh, understand is, but if you look back at the last twenty years or so of uh, urea coming into Western Canada and being sold to farmers, that average price, uh, if we want to compare, has been around five hundred and ten to five hundred fifteen dollars a ton. So when you look forward, based on what Oliver you're saying there, we're expecting, you know over a 25% increase in the average cost uh, per metric ton of uh, urea fertilizer uh, and possibly even higher. Um, the other thing I see there is, you know, as we can see on this slide here, there's, there's a lot of profit in the value chain based on the cost of production and the ultimate price to the farmer. Um, you know, so this, this is what a lot of our projects all about, um, allowing you farmers to participate along that value chain and capture that value. As, as Oliver had mentioned, um, you know, it's not, it's, you can't insulate from everything, but if you take examples such as logistics and stuff, by has, having this fertilizer plant and you investing in this and taking the offtake, that'll allow you to participate that. Our goal is not to go and change the market price uh, in total, uh, but rather allow you to participate on the back end. Um, the other piece I wanted to just touch on is just that concept of insulating farmers from uh, the external factors. We're never going to be able to completely uh, get rid of all that. But um, I believe that there's a lot of factors in place by having your own facility in your own country uh, that will allow you to mitigate a lot of those fact those external factors that play a role in the global fertilizer dynamic market or market dynamics today.